Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and one of the most frequently asked questions with For All Kerbal Kind is what mods we use and how to install them. And that's always been a tricky one to answer as for a long time our install has been a haphazard mishmash of sloppily written configs plus outdated modern game versions. This has happened because the series was never meant to go on for the three years that it has. Wait, three years? What the f- We were happy just maintaining an if it ain't broke don't fix it approach to our install. That is, until N9's latest episode, in which he encountered a game-breaking bug which threatened to derail our plans for the series. With the game and our core mod now in their final major versions though, plus Kerbal Space Program 2 being in the state that it is for the foreseeable future, this was the final sign that I needed to give things a major overhaul. Not only to future-proof the series, but also to make it easier than ever for our viewers to play the game the way that we are. And that's what this guide is for. Plenty of folks are going to ask me why I can't just give them a zip of my game data folder, and that's because it breaks many of the mods licensing and redistributing other people's work is generally just a crappy thing to do. I've worked really hard to make this as simple as possible, so let's get stuck in. First things first, you need a clean install of Kerbal Space Program version 1.12.3. The latest version probably works just fine, but this is the one the RP1 mod devs recommend, so let's not risk their wrath any more than making an installation guide already is. To do this, simply find KSP in your Steam library, right click, go to Properties, then Betas, and select 1.12.3. Let the game update, and voila! If you didn't get KSP on Steam, I, I don't know, just Google it, it's really not that hard. Next, head to your KSP directory, go up a folder, and make a new install by copying and pasting the folder, being sure to give it a relevant name. This should be standard practice when installing mods. Next, you want to download CCAN and my CCAN mod pack, all links in the description below. I like to place the files in my KSP directory just to keep things organized, but you can run them from anywhere. Run CCAN, go to File, then Manage Instances, then add our new KSP directory. From there, simply go to install from .ccan and voila, the mods you need will be installed, at least most of them. Some of our mods aren't on CCAN, and the version of RP1 we use actually prevents you from installing it despite it working perfectly. If you're starting from scratch and you want the latest and greatest RP1 experience, I would highly recommend simply following their installation guide. No guarantees it'll work perfectly with all our configs, but more on that later. But if you want to have a similar experience to what you've seen in the series thus far, download RP1 version 1.13.2.2 and drag it into your game data folder manually. This is the final version of legacy RP1, which we can't update from without starting a new save file. Now for the mods which aren't on CCAN. Pay close attention here because it gets a little fiddly. You want to install the latest version of CH4 Changing History, but then delete everything in its part folder except for engines, as it's an abandoned mod at this point, but it still adds some awesome stuff for the late game. For European Space Agency parts, install the latest version of KNES. For the Soviet MAKS space plane, install the little known mod by Raise Space. Install the newly updated Space Shuttle system for a realistic looking space shuttle. Install just the Cosmodrome folder from the Cosmodrome mod to add some bike and statics for Kerbal Constructs. Install Mouse Aim Flight if you like playing the game like it's War Thunder. And install just Venstock Revamp slash Squad slash Parts slash Science Parts if you want the cool Soviet antenna model that I use. Realism Overhaul already uses sections of Venstock Revamp, but if you install the entire thing, it'll conflict with Restock. If you want our awesome volumetric clouds and weather effects, go support Black Crack on Patreon to get the mod, then download the free RSS configs for it from Ballistic Fox's Patreon. Now we have all our mods installed, merge my provided game data folder. This adds our custom spacesuits, toggleable gold sun visor, Kerbal Constructs bases, flags, guns, configs, and more. The configs make certain mods compatible with Realism Overhaul, fix bugs, make some balance tweaks, and massively overhaul the tech tree. Feel free to pick and choose which you want to use, but unless you know what you're doing, I'd strongly recommend just using all of them. If you want a streamlined installation which isn't full of redundant parts and loads as quickly as possible, there are a few more steps. Boot up the game in 64-bit mode, as you're going to need 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM to run all this, though if you have less than 32, I'd recommend removing the visual mods or reinstalling RSSVE with low-resolution textures. The first boot will take a while and it might even crash, but just let it run until it reaches the main menu. Here, just quickly create a sandbox save and head into the vehicle assembly building. You'll want to click on the broomstick icon in the toolbar and hit import. This is where you can import my list of the over 600 non-RP0 modded parts and either hide them or do what I do and permanently prune them. Don't worry, this is easily reversible, but it renames the part files so the game doesn't load them. With an install this huge, that's going to drastically improve your load times and memory usage. 
We didn't prune any stock parts from the game because this can cause some serious problems, but if you want to further tidy things up, close the game and create an empty folder in your game data directory called no non rp0. This prevents anything incompatible with RP0 from appearing in the tech tree, though my configs add a lot of redundant stock parts to this list, as we like to exclusively use procedural ones where possible. And, well, that's everything. These are the difficulty options that we use, but RP1 has been tweaked a lot since we made the save file, so I'd recommend sticking with moderate difficulty with the following tweaks. You might also want to reduce the science rewards to 80% too, as N9's insistence that we leave it at 100 led to us landing on the moon four years early. If you want access to my save and craft files, they can be found in the £1 tier on my Patreon, and I promise that's the last Patreon I'm going to promote in this video. I'm going to be further tweaking the mod pack and its configs, as well as adding things like the Soviet spiral space plane as the series continues, so I'll update the download links and post any changes in a pinned comment as and when they happen. If you have any issues, leave a comment or head on over to my Discord and ask in the For All Kerbal Kind channel. But note that if you've chosen to deviate from this install guide and stuff doesn't work, I won't be able to help. Moving house, starting a new job, and building this install threw a big wrench into things, but For All Kerbal Kind should return to a regular release schedule in two weeks to a month at most. Thanks for watching Penguinauts, I hope you have fun with the mod pack, and I'll see you all next time. A massive thank you to my patrons and donators for their generous support, and an extra special thank you to the amazing stake, Dakota Clark, Olaf Hammerhand, Madzor, Peter Lushtenetz, Simone67, Lady Lagsalot, Scott Milligan, Jesse Smith, NX74656, Jordan Millward, Darth Malakor, and Stommy Martin Glogie.